The children have been spending some lovely holiday days at Grandpa's small farm. Lily, Michael and Leo are making the most of these fine summer evenings to hear more stories about the heroes of faith. For the Bible explorers now know they can learn a lot from these stories. I'm wondering how things are going with Alexander in my class. I... Alexander? Is he the one who's feeling a bit low? Yes. I don't think he's felt that good lately because there are some kids who tease him quite a bit. I've seen it many times. Huh? What do you say when you see it? No. Uh, I haven't really said much because I don't dare. I'm not very good at talking when a lot of people look at me. Do you know what, Michael? I can understand that you feel that way. But we can learn to be brave so that we can say and do what we know is right. Can we? We can. It's something we have to practice, though. You've heard of Paul, haven't you? He wrote a letter to a young friend named Timothy. And in the first letter, in chapter 4, verse 12, it says, Let no one despise you because you are young, but be an example to the believers in word and deed. What does it mean to be despised? It means that other people don't think much of you, and that makes me unhappy and lacking in confidence. Then I don't dare to do or say what I really should. So if we don't let ourselves be despised, it means we don't let the fear of what the others think rule us. We should not let anyone despise us, but be an example. Yes, I'll tell you a story about someone who probably practiced a lot with just that. And that's why she became a hero in Israel. She saved the whole country. Oh, I want to hear that story. What I'm going to tell you goes way back in the history of the Israelites. They are God's people, and God had promised that when they were faithful to him and kept the laws he had given them, he would bless them greatly. But that promise also had another side. Because if the Israelites turned away from God and didn't care about God's laws and began praying to other gods, then God would have to turn away from them. And then the blessing would be completely gone and a curse would come upon them. The Israelites knew that very well actually, yet they failed God. God chose some very faithful men to be judges in Israel to help Israel to do the good. God gave the judges wisdom and spoke to them so that they could make the people return to God. What is a judge? You probably know what a football referee is, don't you? He makes sure that the rules are followed. And if someone breaks the rules, the judge decides the punishment. Well, a judge in Israel decided in cases where, for example, some disagreed or had violated God's law. And in addition, they could hear God speak to them. So it helped the country to have such judges. But every time a judge got old and died, the Israelites started going off the rails again. God therefore had to curse the land. Kings in neighboring countries began to take war against Israel and especially a king named Yabin. He sent his commander with all his soldiers and chariots into Israel and for 20 years they were tormenting the Israelites. It was a very difficult time and God found almost no Israelites he could use to speak to the people so they could finally become faithful to him again. Then God did something really unusual for that time. He found a woman called Deborah. She was called by God to be a prophet and a judge in Israel. God could use her. I can imagine that many people found it strange and Deborah probably had to choose not to care what others were thinking. 
She trusted God, and because he had called her, she did it. After she became a judge, she sat in judgment in lawsuits for the people of Israel. But she also knew well what was happening around the country, and she knew about King Yabin and his commander, who had been tormenting the country for 20 years. Deborah couldn't just sit and watch anymore. Was there no one in this country of all the strong men and warriors of the Israelites who could take up the fight against them? Deborah knew that God was telling her that this had to stop. Israel had to get this enemy out of the country. She was no warrior or commander, but she knew that if God was with them, they could win any battle. So she asked Barrett, who was a brave warrior, to come and see her. She said to him to take 10,000 men to a certain place, and there they would lure the enemy in and would beat them with God's help. Barrett replied, if you go with me, I'll go. But if you don't go, I won't go either. Huh? Did he want Deborah with him in the war? Ah, he did. He did. He didn't dare go alone. He probably realised that Deborah had a courage and a faith in God that was stronger than his. Then Deborah said, Yes, I'll go with you, but then you won't be the one who gets the honour for the victory. Then Deborah prophesied that the war would succeed, but that the mighty commander of the enemy, of whom everyone had been so afraid, would be beaten by a woman. And that's exactly how it turned out. God was with them and made the enemy's soldiers and horses completely confused so they couldn't fight. And Israel won a crushing victory. But the enemy commander got away. Barrett knew that they had to find this commander-in-chief for the victory to be absolutely certain. So he set off after him and searched everywhere to find him. Then Deborah's second prophecy came true, for the commander hid with a woman who he thought would not be able to hurt him. But there he was wrong, for the lady killed the commander and the war was won. The Israelites could finally live in peace in their country thanks to Deborah's courage and trust in God. She didn't care what others thought, just what God wanted her to do. I want to be just as brave and not care what the others think. That's great, Michael. It starts with us deciding and then, of course, we have to practice it. And when I think of myself as a servant of God, then I know I can trust that God is with me. And that's why I don't have to be afraid or sad about what others think. God is the greatest, most powerful and strongest, and I am his servant. Then we can be really good examples. <laughs>